Okay, in this video we're going to take a quick look at how we uh, do a simple uh, debug operation on our quick stick board. Um, in the last video we left off at creating a simple bare metal project that kind of just opened up with all some, some default files from Code Warrior. Uh, so now we're going to kind of make it work. The, the first thing we want to do is make sure, of course, you have your quick stick plugged in. Uh, the USB connection is on the right hand side if you are looking at it from the perspective um, of if the LCD is looking at you. So it should show up as a J-Link driver and your USB controllers um, is kind of all you need. So the first thing you want to do is uh, let's do a clean operation that kind of wipes out the last binary uh, and then it kind of rebuilds after you do the clean. Our build configuration is set up as internal flash. And then to debug it, we just click on this little bug button. Now, when I click on this, because I've debugged before, it's going to go, it's going to know what to do. But sometimes you might get a window that pops up and says, well, which configuration did you want, the internal flash or RAM? Um, I'm picking the internal flash, and I've already, you've got to make sure you've got to build the internal flash. That's been at least compiled once. So I'm going to click on this button. And you notice the first thing it does is uh, it kind of reorients the screen. And in Eclipse, we call this a new perspective. Up here in the upper right, we're now what's called the debug perspective. A perspective is just kind of a, uh, you know, a configuration of how the windows are oriented. It brings up new stuff that kind of kind of brings up things pertinent to what you're trying to do. So there's a C++ perspective for doing code and a debug perspective. Um, for doing debugging. I kind of like this in Eclipse. It's kind of a nice feature. Um, you notice it uh, while I was talking there, you saw some nonsense down in this console window. Say it was, it was downloading, and when it's all done, uh, it kind of has a pointer here. It stops the main function, um, and it's ready to go. So to run this code, we simply say resume. Now, the printf, it'll actually kind of auto magically come through. Whenever you call printf, there's some back end code that'll kind of come through that J link interface and print in this debug window. Now, don't expect to do very fast printf operations to this window, but it is kind of a way that you can kind of tell that things are working. And uh, after that, it just goes into this infinite loop with this counter. Now, what the first thing I want to do is kind of stop the CPU. Or well, not stop it, at least suspend it. So if I click suspend, a little pause, it'll stop wherever it was at. So you notice it kind of stops at this uh, variable called counter. It's the only thing that's kind of going on here. In the right, we can actually see the disassembly, um, what, what's actually happening here. So uh, we can see that it's doing uh, an add instruction on register R4, um, and, and it kind of goes from uh, from there. So that, that's kind of cool. Um, if we do this, if we just simply hover our mouse over the, the counter, it shows us that variable and kind of in real time. So that's kind of cool. If we come over to variables, this is a local variable and uh, if this is the register. We can right click on it and say format. Let's say we want to look at it in uh, hexadecimal. Um, there we go. It's kind of cool that there's actually, we can look at it in a uh, a fixed point number format. Um, we can look at it in binary. Um, so that's kind of cool. So what we'll do now is, is another cool feature. I'm going to say use the green arrow to say go and I'm just going to double click on the line that the counter is at. That sets a breakpoint and it, it immediately stops at that breakpoint uh, uh, and uh, kind of pauses the execution of the processor and brings up our little window here. So what we can do then, once we break point, we can say step over. And you notice as I do that, I can just kind of step through my code. It goes to that for loop uh, and just kind of iterates. And if you look up in the window, I'll re-move this to uh, decimal. Kind of as we step, you notice the counter counts up. So we can look at variables, um, you know, set breakpoints. Let's say the variable hadn't been added yet. What you can do is if you have something else that's not a local variable, you can always do to, oops, I got to get on the window here, we can right click and say add watch expression, and you can type in any any variable name. So under, ex, brings up an expressions window, uh, so, so it's right there. We can look at any core register in the device, so 
For example, if we we're debugging real time and we wanted to look at, I don't know, for example, the UART, all of the registers, we haven't modified them, but they're all here to kind of play with. And so if we click on it, a register, we can go and look at the register. It even breaks down the bit fields in the register. And we can kind of edit this, and it allows us to edit any field in there and type it in and, and check it out. So that's kind of the basic debugging feature. So um, that's our first exercise in debugging on the quick stick. So when I'm done, I'll just hit stop. And to go back to the other perspective, we'll just click on C, C++. So that's how you just download a, a, a basic piece of code to the quick stick. And this is the same no matter if you're using a quick stick with a J-Link or maybe the OSBDM or the P&E Multilink or the other supported JTAG adapters. So uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Try to run through this exercise and uh, do it for yourself so you can learn how. In the next video, we're going to take a look at um, taking someone else's example and maybe copying into our own project, how we kind of stitch together uh, you know, a more complex example.